don't overthink it, it's just paint. Welcome back to another episode of Paint Society. In this episode, we're gonna show you how to modify your clear coat just a little bit to get a beautiful OEM finish without any orange peel. Now on your first coat of clear, you're gonna mix it up just the way the technical data sheet says to. In this case, we're using a slow hardener and it's a four to one, and we're using our DV1 clear coat gun with a 1.3 fluid tip. Now, when you go to apply your first coat of clear coat, what I want you to do is to apply it just the way you always would. First, making sure that the surface is completely free of any lint. And how do we do this? By using a tack rag right before our clear coat. Now, I like to tack right before clear coat and not too much time in between, so I reduce the amount of static electricity and contact with the panel itself. When it comes to clear coating, our first coat does not need to be perfect. Many people will tell you that you need to spray it the way you want it to look on the first coat. And although that is a great idea, that does not work for me. Sometimes what will happen is you'll get a buildup on the edges, you'll get a lot of runs. So on my best advice, get the clear coat on. Do not spray it dry. It is not necessarily a light mist coat. If you do that, you're not gonna build up the mills and you're gonna have a hard time trying to recover in the second coat and smooth it out. So what I want you guys to do is to put it on between 75% and 80% overlap on your first coat of clear and don't worry about going back and making it completely wet if you got a couple spots that are dry. When it comes to spraying a hood, that's where you're gonna notice the most amount of orange peel or dirt. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to slow down your passes just a little bit. I want you to slow it down and put it on between 85 and 90% overlap. What this is gonna do is gonna build up your surface just a little bit more with clear, and by that time, you're ready to go. You can see it doesn't take a whole lot of technique. You don't even need to watch when you put down your first coat. Just make sure that it is on there. After your first coat is applied, you're gonna want to wait at least 10 to 15 minutes for your second coat if you're using a slower hardener. What is this gonna do for you? Well, it's gonna allow that first coat to really, really dry enough so it's tacky like the backside of a piece of tape so that your second coat will really stick to it. Now I'm gonna show you that little bit of a mixing hack that you can do to improve and get away with no orange peel on your finishes. All you're gonna do is you're gonna take your second coat and we're gonna mix it up the same exact way at first, four to one. We'll take our hardener, we'll add it in. Here is the key right here. You wanna use a little bit of extra slow reducer or highest temp reducer possible. Here we mixed up 18 ounces so how do we add 10%? Well, if you're not too smart with math, all you gotta do is take 18 times 0.10, and that's 1.8. So we'll roughly round it off to two, and we'll add two ounces of reducer. You do not want to do this to your first coat. I only want you to perform this mini hack on your second coat, and here's why. If you apply it on your first coat, well, what the reducer is doing, it's just thinning out your clear coat just a little bit. If you do this on your first coat, you could risk runs everywhere and build up on the edges. What might look beautiful when you spray as it levels off will look even worse as it dries. So here's why I recommend only doing this little hack on your second coat. Your first coat has dried enough, you don't have any runs because it's a thicker coat. Uh, by the time the second coat hits it, we can start to really work on and focus on getting that surface nice and smooth. By allowing a little bit of reducer, no more than 10%, what we're doing to the clear coat is we're thinning it out, but we're also reducing the solids, which is not the best idea, which is why we only do it on our second coat. Level out that clear. What the reducer does is it's gonna help that clear break up a little bit. Now, I do not suggest doing this in a colder temperature. If you're running between, let's say, or lower than 75 degrees, it's like already adding reducer to your paint because that paint is naturally gonna wanna flow out. But you see, if you're spraying in temperatures like we are, over 85 degrees to 100 degrees in the paint booth, that clear coat just wants to dry as soon as it hits the panel. 
but that reducer will help keep it open a little bit longer and when it stays open longer meaning wetter it's going to allow the window to be much bigger for it to flow out you see if your clear coat's already drying by the time you hit the panel with it then it's not going to have a chance to enable it to flow out by flowing out it will smooth out and you'll have less orange peel in your clear coat which is a very 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 helpful tip so remember do not abuse this because what might look good when you spray will not look good the next day also remember when you spray it if it doesn't look 100 percent glassy take a step back give it a few minutes and watch it flow out you'll see such a big difference in the paint after you give it a few moments a lot of these clears will self level by themselves and you'll be amazed that your paint job looks good only a few moments after you can see here it's a fantastic finish only a few pieces of dirt here and there to nib and buff something we don't want to have to do in a body shop so working on your finishes is very important so we can move on to the next vehicle and not to spend hours buffing out orange peel we can see the finish is beautiful here so let's hear some final thoughts well, I hope that little mixing tip helps you out. Just remember, like I said earlier, do not abuse it. Now, you might ask me, Brian, my clear coat, it already comes with a reducer that we need to mix in. Do I over reduce it? Well, no, you just keep that reducer at the same mixing ratio. But here's what you can do. You can take that mixing, that reducer, and you can change it to a slower one. That is going to help smooth things out. Remember when you're doing this, only use it when you need to. I would even suggest trying it on a panel first before you try it on an actual vehicle, maybe something that doesn't matter. For the guys in the garage, keep those fans running long after you have painted. That's gonna prevent some of your drying issues like solvent pop and dieback. You wanna keep air moving over the panel so it flashes quicker. Also, if you're in a spray booth, don't hit the bake button. That's like taking your car and pulling it out in the sun. Of course, unless you need to, because you're in a production shop, well, you have no choice, but if you can help it, allow these clear coats and these products to dry naturally so that you get less drying problems, solvent, pop, dieback, pinching, your clear coat shriveling up. These are all common application in drying problems. We're gonna go ahead and get this thing assembled and we'll take a look at it. But in the meantime, guys, this is Brian from Paint Society reminding you, don't overthink it, it's just paint. See you guys on the next one.